Welcome to Sports Legends New England, legends that you grew up with, legends that made memories. What we do is bring you the legends behind those memories. We love it, and we know you're going to too. Jack Heath alongside the legendary Bob LaBelle for Sports Legends New England and today we have a Red Sox legend who I did not know until our show spent a lot of time living in New Hampshire and has had a remarkable life Bob. I don't know whether he was growing up in New Hampshire or Medford or... Oh, he's a Medford guy. No kidding, they're all in Medford, it's like Winchester without trees. <laughs> Exactly. Huh? Med exactly. Am I right? Three families, two families, yeah. Am I right? Winchester yeah. without trees. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. Billy Monbouquet, you know, and you did spend some time in New Hampshire, so let's get rid of that time in New Hampshire and talk about that because your son and my son played sports together in Goffstown, New Hampshire. Yeah, that's, it just seems like it was yesterday, but God, it's... It does, uh, doesn't it? It's, you know... Almost 30 years ago, and uh, you wonder where the time goes. And uh, both your son and my son have been very successful. And Probably to no fault of us. No fault of me, <laughs> exactly. But, but your son. My, my son is a lieutenant colonel in the Marine Corps, was in uh, Iraq, uh, got the uh, bronze medal. And he won't tell me what it was for. Is that right? And he says, well, you know, that's the way the Marines are. But, uh, you know, I, I just talked to him the other day. He just got back from Indonesia. He was there uh, working with the Indonesian Marines. And he spent uh, some time in Colombia. And, and he married a, a Colombia girl, and they're expecting in July. So, uh, Grandpa. I, I, I mean, I loved uh, New Boston, which was just a beautiful, scenic, some of the best views in uh, southern New Hampshire. And uh, uh, I mean, I, I would go back there, but, you know, I have leukemia and, I can't, and my doctors are, you know, in Boston. And I'd go to Pittsburgh, New Hampshire again. <laughs> to get away from the traffic. I, I mean, it doesn't matter where you go. Now. Well, I know you've been pretty sick. Well, I, you know, it's, I have acute myeloid uh, leukemia, which is, my doctors tell me it's, you know, the worst one to have. I, I had a stem cell transplant, it'll be four years ago in the, this coming uh, October. But uh, so far, I feel good, knock on wood. And, uh, and your boy, Bobby, is doing very well, a successful doctor. Yeah, he's a it's always nice to hear those things. Yeah, cardiologist. Yeah. Ooh, you, yeah. ooh, the heart. Yeah, but if yeah. that's all he knows about is that rectangular <laughs> that's box. That's, that's all he needs to know. Shoulder or wrist, he had no clue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How how did you get the? What happened here? How did you get that? You know. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Oh. Bill, you you've had an amazing life. But let's bring it back to Medford, as Bob said, where where you started in 1958 to 1965 for our viewers. Uh, you were a pretty darn good pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, and not many people, young folks, grow up in Boston. There have been, of course, some, and played for the Boston Red Sox, and that must have been a thrill. Then you went on, I might say, well, uh, over a 1,000 strikeouts, um, and you went on and played for the Yankees and the Tigers, I believe, and finished it all out west. But a uh, pretty amazing career for a young guy from Medford. Yeah, I, I, I played with a lot of... Uh... Well, I always tell the kids, I said, I put most of those guys in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> but I played with Mays, McCovey, Perry, Marichal, Kaline, Mantle, Ford, uh, Yastrzemski, and a, some guy named Williams. Some guy but I tell the kids that Williams played with me, and they, they, he played with you? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I spent 50 years in baseball. And it was time for me to, to get out. It, it, it became tough working with the kids. 
Uh, they don't ask questions. They don't, uh, when you talk to them, they look the other way or the head's down. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I have a lot of old school in me. And <laughs> when I was a kid growing up, when someone was talking to you, you looked right at them. But, uh, you know, I, Kids today have a tendency to think they know it all. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you something. 50 years, I don't, I don't know everything about this game. I want Logan to take this, but I just, you just mentioned so many great names, Bob. I mean, what he just went through. But right-handed batter, right-handed pitcher, Medford. Just take us from your upbringing to the big leagues. Well, I, I grew up in Medford. Uh, and uh, I didn't go to college. Graduated in 1955, signed with the Red Sox. Great big bonus of $225 a month. Wow. And then, uh, and I loved it. You know, I'm looking at my paycheck all the time. I'm going, oh, I got to pay my rent here and I got to eat. And whatever I had, then that went home. But uh, I got to the big leagues quick. And I was fortunate to play under some great managers. I mean, Gene Mark. I mean, uh, Gene Mock, never won sometimes a World you, Series. you might like him and you might not like him, but I'll tell you what, his knowledge of baseball was outstanding. And uh, I remember th one time in spring training throwing batting practice and he's got no chance of hitting me. And he says, and he fires the bat at me and he says, throw that bat back. I said, get it yourself. And he comes storming out on the mound. And he's trying to get up in my face. I said, Gene, get off my mound. This is my mound. No one else belongs on here. Now get off here before I snap your neck. I was really mad. I mean, I was really mad. And Ted Bosfield grabbed him and he said, Gene, if I were you, I would get off his mound. But that's the way it was. I mean, you know, you have to fight for everything, which is, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, but what happened? We didn't have okay, anything. What's the end of the story? <laughs> well, what's the end of the story? Did he end up not talking to you? Did he end oh, up no, trading? Oh, no, no. He liked that from me. He, like he liked that, that from me. And then, uh, you know, a month later, I got called up to the big, uh, two months later, up to the big leagues. Right. It's time to get in shape, and with the latest fitness equipment from Precision Fitness, you can look and feel great. Since 1988, New Englanders just like you have relied on Precision Fitness equipment. The staff at Precision Fitness will work closely with you to match the right equipment to your particular needs. With expert delivery and setup and award-winning service, it's easy to see why so many people turn to Precision Fitness equipment. Top pro athletes, leading health clubs, and hospitals rely on Precision Fitness equipment. Why not you? Precision Fitness equipment in Newton, Hanover, Natick, and Nashua. Caring for the quality of your life is what we do at the New Hampshire Neurospine Institute. Our solution to back, neck, and brain disorders is an integrated team approach. We specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of neurosurgical, spine, and orthopedic conditions. We can provide you with personalized care while utilizing state-of-the-art medicine. Learn more about regaining the quality of your life at nhneurospine.com. A month later, I got called up to the big, uh, two months later, up to the big leagues. Right. What was it like pitching at February? I loved it there. If you go there, you'll see all those dents in that wall that I put there, you know? <laughs> but I, I, you know, my first game in the big leagues was against the Tigers, and uh, Billy Martin stole home on you. Actually, the, ca the catcher dropped the ball. But anyway, the next time up, I unloaded on him, boy. <laughs> I don't know how we got him. No helmets in those days. And, uh, and he popped the ball up, and so. He threw at him, and he hit, managed to hit the ball. No the, next, no, the next pitch, he popped the ball up, and now he's coming around, and he's coming right towards me. Well, the glove was just about, I mean, you know, like my dad used to say, make sure you get that first one in, right? But he walked, and when he ran by me, he said, ah, you owed me that, Rook, you know? And then I ended up being his pitching coach in New York, which I don't 
you know, I don't wish that on anybody because that was a tough job. <laughs> That's pretty. Yeah, that was tough. I mean, uh, Billy wanted to take the credit for everything. And, uh, you know, he'd second guess you. And uh, I mean, geez, it's just, uh, you know, he'd send you out there when the, he brought, we brought in another reliever and he didn't do well. And he'd tell me to go get him, not him because he didn't want to get booed, let me get booed, right? So, uh, you know, and I'm walking out there cussing and everything else, you know. And Gidby used to say, what's wrong? <laughs> Gidby? He's, oh, he was, he was great to work with. And uh, he just, uh, I remember when you had the plays on, and, and, and of course Manningly was at first. Manningly said, I got all of this, and Gidby said, I have all the rest, you know? I mean, that was wonderful. In spring training, they came, uh, Manny would come down every day when we worked on those fundamentals. And of course, he was a great defensive first baseman. And Gidry probably was our best athlete. I mean, he, he shagged balls in the outfield. He never ran with the pitchers. I mean, he only weighed about 150 pounds, maybe. Louisiana Lightning, boy, he had some lightning stuff. You mentioned uh, earlier, Bill, uh, uh, Williams, Mays, a couple of the players you played with, uh, just, you know, legendary names, and you're a legend in the, in the, in the Red Sox, you know, in Boston, uh, but what memories come out first when you just, a couple of those players, just a couple of memories? Well, you know, I, you know what I remember about Ted Williams? Because one of his favorite sayings was, when he asked a hitter, what do you think What's the first thing you have to do to be a good hitter? And everybody, oh, confidence, oh, this and that, you know. And I was 18 years old sitting on the bench I had just signed. And I'm sitting there, geez, you know, guys I grew up, the coach at the I always said, get a good pitch to hit. So, uh, you know, the guys didn't know, and he said, get a good pitch to hit. Well, then he asked me, I said, well, you got to get a good pitch to hit. He says, look at this guy. He's only 18 years old. <laughs> you know, he hasn't played any pro ball. But that was the growing up. And we played so much more than the kids. We didn't have access to cars to drive around and stuff like that. We might have different, a bike. Different, different time. Yeah, it's a different time. But let me tell you something. Guys could play then. I mean, and the guys before me could play. It's not just about these guys thinking, you know, well, we're the only guys who can play. Uh-uh. Uh, yeah, I, I remember sitting on the bench with Raditz and the, the guys in the, in, the, uh, in the dugout there one day, this is a few years ago, and they were talking about salaries and this. Ah, you guys made good money. And I said, well, I started off at 6,000 and I went to 75, then I went to 85, then I went to 11. And then I went to 14 after five years. Well, he said, well, 14,000, that, that's about the same as 400 and some odd thousand which they make today. And so I said, what school did you to go to? Well, you know, you know, he, he, well, I went to Stanford, which uh, I, I don't think he did, but he was trying to trick me around a little bit. But uh, I mean, I wasn't the smartest bear in the woods, but I was smart enough to know it. And I said, oh, you had a tutor, right? He says, well, what's that mean? <laughs> that means you are a dumb SOB <laughs> if you think 14,000 equates to 400 and some odd thousand, you know? I mean, we knew what Ted Williams was making, but no one else knew what anyone else was making, you know? You know, as far as I, I, thought, I, was, I thought I was doing all right. My high salary was uh, 35,000. and. Uh, you know, well, I'm not going to say what that is today. I, 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 that still listen, was pretty good back then. Yeah. I, I told Johnny Pesky one day, sitting on the bench we were in 1963, I said, you know something, Johnny? I'd have played for nothing. He said, you stupid ass, you did. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? That's the way it was. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you go to spring training, you, you, I always was in good shape. When I walked into Scottsdale, Arizona, I was ready. I could give you four innings, five innings right then. 
I worked out at Tufts. They were wonderful to me. And um, I, I can remember the, the time that Tony Canigliaro came there, you know, and uh, I said to him, did you go upstairs to ask athletic director if you could work out here? He says, well, you're working out here. I said, Tony, uh-uh, that's not gonna fly. And I'm gonna tell you, you're not gonna screw it up for me. Now get your bloody body up there and ask. And he did, and you know something? That's that Tony that kid would have been in the Hall of Fame so uh, fast. Oh, God. It, it, Talk it, about a 5-2 player. Yeah, right? I'm from his hometown of Swampscape, and yeah. uh, that was just, he just assumed he could work out there, but you know, it's just such a sad, sad thing what happened. Oh, 5-2 a player. 5-2, a 5-2 player. Caring for the quality of your life is what we do at the New Hampshire Neurospine Institute. Our solution to back, neck, and brain disorders is an integrated team approach. We specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of neurosurgical, spine, and orthopedic conditions. We can provide you with personalized care while utilizing state-of-the-art medicine. Learn more about regaining the quality of your life at nhneurospine.com. Since 1988, we've been helping New Englanders just like you get fit. Our fitness experts will work with you one-on-one -on -one and help you select the right equipment for your needs. We also deliver, set up, and service all the equipment that we sell. Am I forgetting something? Oh yeah, Bob! These things are great at PFV in Natick, Newton, Hanover, and Nashua. Precision Fitness Equipment, Natick, Newton, Hanover, and Nashua. PrecisionFitnessEquipment.com Five tool player. Five tool, a five tool player. Yeah. Could run, could hit, could hit with power. He could throw, and he was a, a good outfielder. Oh, you know, it's like a K-line, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that bat was so quick. And First time up in the big leagues, hit the. Isn't home Bobby run. V wearing his number, Bob? I noticed. Uh, I'm not sure. Last night, uh, the other night on the game. I was a coach with Bobby in New York when I was the Mets pitching coach. Okay. What was that like? Well, you, you know, um, I had been out on the road and George Bamberger brought me back. And so Bobby was saying, this is how we want to play him and uh, how we want to pitch him and everything else. And so I said, Bobby, I, I think we ought to get this four guys that are pitching in this series up and let them tell us how they pitch, what kind of success they have against them, where they should play them. And I don't, I think, I don't think Bobby liked it. I, in fact, I know he didn't. And so, uh, you know, he walked away and, and Tom Seaver got up and yay! <laughs> you know? And there's another, uh, what a wonderful guy he was. He was a hell of a pitcher, too. Yeah. But uh, uh, Bobby Valentine knows baseball as good as anybody I've ever been around, really. He's a good, solid baseball guy. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of the old school in him, and, and uh, you know, right now it looks like he's, I don't know if he's been shut off or well, he's, he's not, you know. First of all, you can't rip the players up in the press. That's number one thing. You cannot do that, you know. And nobody likes to be chewed upon or yelled at in front of all of the guys because that's embarrassing. My thing is always, come into my office, okay? That's the way you do those things. And, um, uh, but, uh, I mean, he's, he's a solid baseball guy. I mean, he, I, mean I, I remember when he used to go around and he would, uh, I mean, you know, about base stealing, getting leads and stuff like that, you know, I mean, I mean he was hurt. He, he had what I thought was gonna be a, you know, a good career and then he got hurt. I think he broke his ankle. But he, he's a solid baseball guy. And I'm going to tell you something. They'll, they'll come out of that with what's that little funk that they're in, you know. 
Well, they got good pitching last night, and as Sal Magley says, you know something? If they don't give up any runs, you can't give up any runs. That's what he used to pretty, say. Pretty, pretty smart, Sal. <laughs> Sal, he used to come out and he'd say, Skip doesn't like what he's seeing. And he suggests you get your act together and get it together right now. So that's, you know? that's where he'd come out. That was the short talk. Uh, maintenance, not too sweet, but maintenance, right now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's he, pretty uh, I want to ask. I want to ask. Uh, I want to ask Bob a question before we begin with Bill today. You you were pretty excited, Bobby, because of interviewing your friend here and all the Red Sox history that you know, Bob, and you've covered. Where do you put Bill in terms of perspective and place with all the guys that you've met and you've known through different eras and teams? But his story. What stands out to you as all the coverage you did of the Red Sox? Well, first of all, you got to know if he's from Medford, he's got to be tough. And if uh, if you succeeded and were from Medford and, and you went on in the, in the big leagues and if you're able to pitch a no hitter, I mean, come on, you know, the, the resume is is there. I would you know, want to hear more about that no hitter and what he knew about it and when he knew about it and all that other stuff that goes on when you're throwing a, a game like that. But also I want to ask him if he thought that his son was, if he were as proud of his son with the bronze medal, although he doesn't know what he, it stood for, uh, as his son is proud of him for uh, staring down his cancer and, and trying to beat that. I, I think that's a family dynamic that I'd like to hear about. So, okay, let me, let's go to the no hitter first. Okay. Well, Talk, I, I had, I hadn't won a game for a long time. It was probably a month and a half. I mean, I was struggling. And uh, we're on the plane going over and uh, to Chicago that day. And uh, I was doing, trying to do the New York Times crossword puzzle. You ever try to do that one? Right. And so uh, the stewardess said, to her, how are you doing? And I said, ah, I'm struggling with this and I'm struggling pitching and everything else. And, when are you pitching? I said, tonight. And she gets up and walks, oh, are you pitching no hitter tonight? And so, well, of course, you laugh. But I was pitching against uh, early win, you know, who was a hell of a pitcher, a 300 yes. game winner. And he hadn't gotten, he was about 298 or something like that. But uh, and, uh, I just, I, when I warmed up, uh, we used to warm up down by the dugouts in that way, you know, like in Yankee Stadium at Fenway and in Chicago and in Detroit. Uh, you, uh, I, didn't, I hated going to the bullpen. And, uh, so I'm, I'm throwing, and let me tell you something, the ball just flowing out of my hand. Maybe it's because maybe I had a couple of extra days and so I walked back into the, it was about 48 to 50 degree. I walked back into the dugout. I used to go get a towel. So I'd take some time. I didn't want to keep throwing. Well, uh, I come back out to catch. So what's wrong? I said, nothing, nothing. Well, come on, we got to get going. I didn't want to waste it. You know, I watch yeah. guys. Some guys don't know how to warm up. And so, uh, Go out there and everything's going. I got. I walked Al Smith in the second inning. My curveball was, I mean, just nasty that night, and I threw him a three and two curve, and it was low. And Raddatz always says it was a strike. And the umpire was Bill McKinley jumping. Bill McKinley was jumping all over the place. And we keep going and going, and we go into the seventh, uh, eighth, and. Um, Pagaroni's on second, and Luke Hinton gets a base hit, and it's a it's a bang bang play at home plate. Now I'm I'm sitting on on deck, and I'm going, you know something? He was out. McKinley called him safe. So now I'm leading one to nothing. So I go out one two three in the eighth. We go one two three in the ninth. Go back out for the ninth. One two. Get the first two guys. Sherm Malala, I strike out. Nelly Fox grounds the third. I mean, that's how good I was throwing. You ever didn't see Nelly Fox hitting the ball to third base. 
And then after the show was the hitter, I got him 0 and 2, and I threw him a slider about this far off the plate. And you know how the umpires like to go, whoa, like this. And McKinley says, no, no swing. And as the ball's coming back to everybody's booing, as the ball's coming back to me, somebody yells from the stands, they shot the wrong McKinley. <laughs> and I went, oh, I, went, I said, let me step off the mound here. I don't want to lose my concentration. And uh, <laughs> then the next pitch, I threw him another one, and he swung and missed. And let me tell you something, white guys can jump. <laughs> I mean, I was yay high that off the, off the ground, and uh, but, you know what a thrill. My 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 makeup was I was starting this game. I didn't want anybody in my game, because I know the feeling of completing the game versus going five innings and you're sitting and you know you don't know what's going to happen. But I used to say to Raditz, if you don't get him, I'm going to kick your ass. I'll get him. I'll get him. Now, here's a guy, six foot five, 275 pounds. When he shook his hands, they were up here. That, his hands were actually this big. Just a big man, right? And I'll get him. I'll get him. Then after a while, because every time I said, if you don't get him, I'm going to kick your ass. And he'd say, well, you just get up in the clubhouse crack me a bud, I'll be right up. And sure <laughs> enough, <laughs> boom, boom, there he was. I mean, to me, he was the best reliever I saw. You know, I mean, such great control and with them, you know, a little slider that might have broke that much, you know, but that good explosive fastball. You know what I really loved? And I'll just shut up after this. That you guys on the celebration of the 100th anniversary, coming out from behind the Wasn't that wonderful? It was wonderful. And you know what? I'm sitting there up above on the Green Monster and I said, Oh it's Mom Bouquet. Yeah. I said, I'm you know, I said, Oh my God. And then I ran into it. was a long walk. You know what? I, I knew you were kinda I knew you were, you were, had been through some battles. Yeah. So I knew that but there you were out on the field and yeah. I said, Son of a you know, I got well, then I saw was, you the next night or when it was autographing books there was up autograph there. upstairs so no, this was, so good that thanks was a goodness. day or two after that i guess yeah. yeah hey thanks okay babe thanks for sharing some okay. of these great All stories right. sports legends new england is presented by precision fitness equipment with a pros go for fitness equipment with locations in natick newton hanover atterboro and in nashua and northampton new hampshire online at precisionfitnessequipment.com. The Renaissance Boston Patriot Place Hotel and Spa. patriot-place.com. Capital City Limousine Service, online at limosforlegends.com. The New Hampshire Neurospine Institute. We specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of neurosurgical, spine, and orthopedic conditions. NHNeuroSpine.com.